Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be having a look at the Sony Tele. Uh, so let's look at the model number first. So the model number is a KD55XF9005. Now the customers complain that the set works but it won't respond to the remote control. Um, and he's already gone and bought a brand new remote control from somewhere and he says it's not cured the problem so the problem must be on the TV itself so the first thing we do is we locate the infrared remote control sensor board uh, mounted on the front uh, now this is a pretty they're all pretty similar in TVs they've got three connections so I've just drawn a quick diagram up and I'll show you what to look for Right, so this is typical of most sets. You've got the infrared sensor, you've got three connections on it. You've got a ground, an infrared output, um, and a supply voltage, which is usually 3.5 or 5 volt, or in um, some older equipment it might be a bit higher. Um, but basically, um, what you do is you clip on there, and uh, you put your oscilloscope on there, and press the remote control, and um, if there's a pulse output here, then you know the sensor's working. Um, so in mine, I've tried it, there's no pulse output from the infrared sensor. Now I've tried the supply voltage on the board, we'll just have a look at that now. Right, so if you take a look at that now, I'm, I'm on the supply voltage on the um, plug and socket going into the little board. And we do have 3.458 volts. So it's probably a 3.5 volt supply, uh, and that is correct. Now at this point, the sensible thing to do would be just to order a brand new board. Um, because they're only £4.85 and my supplier's got more than 20 in stock. Now usually when somebody's got a lot of something in stock, it means it's a common fault and they sell a lot of them. So before we rush in and buy this brand new board, let's take a quick look at the old one and see what the actual problem is. So if you take a look at the board under the microscope, you can see actually there's a few peripheral components on it here. So we're just going to have a little measure around first before we get the new board. Right, so I've drawn up what's on the circuit board and we know that we've got 3.5 volts here. Um, now if you take a look at that, the 3.5 volt it doesn't go straight to the sensor, it goes through a resistor and it goes to a couple of decoupling capacitors. So what we need to do now is we need to measure the voltage here before we do anything else. We know we've got 3.5 3 coming in. We need to know what's at the sensor now. Because I had one of these once, um, and I don't know what had happened, but somebody had cleaned the screen, uh, and it had got some liquid run down, and it had damaged one of these tracks, and there was power going in, but there wasn't actually power to the sensor. So let's just take... I can't see any liquid damage on this, but let's just take another measurement there first. Right, so I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time as doing this. That is the other end of the resistor, and we only have... 0.4 volts on that so that's interesting so now we only have four possibilities the resistors open circuit well i know it's not that option because i've already measured it to draw this diagram or one of these capacitors is faulty or the sensor's faulty so let's just make uh, a resistance reading now between there and there and just see what we've got Right, now the answer to that is, we only have 8.4 ohms. Right, so we've got 8 ohms across there. We're only left now with uh, three possibilities. The sensor's shorted inside, or one of these capacitors is shorted out. Um, now these are multi-layer ceramic capacitors. My money would be on one of these that's shorted. So let's get them out and have a look. Right, so the first capacitor to take off which is this second one in line, that has actually cured that low resistance reading. And um, to give you an idea what size these caps are, uh, that's a penny, that's the old board. These are needle pointed tweezers. And if we zoom in, that there is the cap I've taken off that's the problem. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the next one to it because they're both in parallel uh, you would presume that they're only local decoupling capacitors on the supply rail um, you would presume that they're both the same value so we're going to take off the one next to it and measure the value of it and then we can put two brand new ones in of the same value So just for demonstration purposes I've soldered two bits of wire to the capacitor that's faulty uh, connect to the flute meter and we've got a resistance of about 8.8 .8 ohm uh, slightly higher than before because we've got this extra resistance introduced by these test leads uh, but as you can see that capacitor uh, is absolutely faulty so what we've got to do now is solder them same two bits of wire and we've got it on a capacitor tester get the uh, other one out of the board and test it for capacitance right now that's even more interesting um, that's the capacitor I've taken out soldered to two bits of wire um, and it's only measuring 11.2 picofarad so I wonder if that capacitor's open circuit because that's far too low um, for a noise filter circuit now I don't have any caps as small as that one on the board so I'm just going to replace it with a single uh, 10 microfarad 25 volt cap which is actually a little bit bigger uh, so you presume more reliable so I'll just have a quick look under the microscope you can see where I've taken off the two caps one there um, one there right and there you can see the bigger and what you would think much more reliable capacitor uh, you can actually see it fitted down the board so let's get this back in the TV now and try it yeah I'll just give you a shot without the uh, cheap Chinese microscope you can see the cap there right so that's perfect we've got the voltage back at the other side of the resistor here uh, let's uh, get the set on now Right, so let's see the result. That's the remote control. Press the button. <coughs> um, and as you can see, I can move up and down. Uh, now the reason it's come on on the installation screen, uh, the customer already told me that they did a factory reset on it in an attempt to cure the remote control problem so I presume you can do the factory reset by just pressing buttons on the telly um, and uh, I know what you're thinking uh, you're thinking was it worth all that trouble when a new board's only a five, less than a fiver well the answer to that has got to be yes um, because there's multiple different reasons um, if you just swap a board then you don't actually learn anything uh, also, it wouldn't make a very good YouTube video um, just putting a new board in. Uh, nobody wants to watch somebody putting a new board in on YouTube. Um, and the third reason is, and probably the most important reason, when the customer asks what it was, and I give him back in a bag to what appear to be little specks of dust, uh, they'd be more appreciative of the repair and uh, the comment will probably be how on earth did you find that and how on earth did you manage to change them parts because they're so small so um, yeah definitely worth um, repairing rather than just changing the board so all right guys and girls many thanks for watching and uh, i'll catch you in the next video then